Moving on to the tribe that did the second best in placements, Yasa had a quick comeback story. They started off very poorly in the first couple uh, episodes, but bounced back, producing some of the season's best power players and strongest and most rootable alliances. But let's start with the bottom of this tribe, as we always do. Once again, I had no choice but to put the first boot here at last, and I mean the first boot. Eric, or Abraham, as you like to go by. I don't know why, but a few uh, players this season went by their surname, which usually only happens with returning players like Cochrane, Wentworth, Varner, Savage, etc. And the interesting thing is that Abraham wasn't even the weakest link on Yasa. He just picked a fight with the wrong person. In episode one, he launched a pretty hard campaign to get Tiffany out, who was already in a strong alliance with the likes of Evie and Liana. Uh, it did seem like at first there could be a tie happening, but some of the men voted against Abraham, sending him home sooner than we even realized he was there. Now, uh, this may be a bit of a controversial opinion, but I think Tiffany was kind of carried this season. I mean, she did need the help of her alliance just to keep her safe in those first two episodes, and from there on, Yasa was safe until the merge, where once again, her alliance was on the outs as Liana ditched them to work with Shan, leaving Tiffany, Evie, and Xander sort of like sitting ducks, and sure, I mean, at the merge, there were some power plays going on that we'll get into later in the video, but it obviously wasn't enough to keep them safe long term, as Tiffany went out in the next episode anyways. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say that she was a coaster per se. She did prove to be trying to save herself, and by involving herself in the epic merge tribal council blindside, she was showing her somewhat strategic prowess, or at least however much she had of it, but she just didn't have enough of it to be able to go as far as Xander or even Evie. Easily the most frustrating vote this season. Voce was pretty heavily edited in the first episode, suggesting that he might be someone to watch, and even though he may not have been in the majority alliance of Yasa, it still seemed to be uh, like he could stay a while. Uh, on top of that, his elimination came out of nowhere, as at first Evie, Liana, and Tiffany targeted Xander because he was unable to vote as he possessed part of the three-way immunity mentioned in part one of this uh, um, play, uh cast ranking, uh, but Tiffany was still worried that Xander had something up his sleeve, some other advantage he could spring on them at Tribal, so she pushed for Voce instead. And uh, the build-up to this Tribal is absolutely nuts. As a matter of fact, it looked like at one point that Evie was actually considering blindsiding Tiffany for just being so paranoid and constantly flip-flopping what she wanted to do, but judging by how the rest of the season played out, I don't judge Tiffany that much for suspecting Xander of having a trick up his sleeve. I mean, it's sad Voce did seem to have a lot of potential, but now he's just seen as a pre-merge bust. I'd say that these next three are all-star caliber players. Let me get that out of the way first. And the thing it, it was, that was so refreshing about Liana was that despite she, despite her having spent a lot of her time on the island supported by the alliances she was in, she desperately wanted to play her own game. And I think she could have gone far if it was if it wasn't for people like Xander or Deshaun. More on him later. She just. Like, she just had this sense of, like, wanting to play her own game and just this this sort of independence about her that we've seen before with winners and something that I think, you know, she could have gone further and we'll explain kind of why she didn't. You know, she had an immense amount of power in her hands, especially with the aptly named Knowledge is Power Advantage, which, yeah, that didn't really go well for her. Now, for those who don't know, the Knowledge is Power Advantage basically allowed the holder of the advantage to steal an idol or advantage from another player at Tribal Council if and only if they correctly guessed that that said person had an idol or advantage in the first place. How this would have, how this worked out was that whoever had this advantage would ask a player of their choice if they had an idol or advantage and then that player had to tell the truth and if they had one, they would have to uh, hand it over. Yeah, can you say overpowered? I bet she'll be, uh, she'll be back to play again, if they ever do have returning players come back again, because, uh, you know, her first game was definitely screwed by insane twists and chaotic vote flips that basically tanked her whole alliance. I mean, once Shan was gone, I mean, she went out in the, the very next episode, because right after that happened, there's like, that new alliance that formed with, like, Xander and, uh, not Evie, but Xander and uh, Erica and Heather and Ricard, and so she just kind of... What well, definitely was one of the most screwed players by a vote flip. Evie is another person who was insanely hyped up in the pre-merge. Uh, they got a lot of screen time dominating confessionals, and they really were ruling over Yasa with an iron grip. And you know that's a firm grip when Liana, someone perfectly capable of playing a strong individual game, seems like a henchman type of player in this sort of in, uh, uh, tribal environment. But like Tiffany, Evie was immediately targeted at the merge. And as a matter of fact, they were the target at the merge, but smart decisions by their dwindling alliance kept them safe for that first pre-merge, uh, uh, sorry, that 
first merge episode. And then on top of that, uh, they won immunity in the next episode, but after that, it was really hard for them to stay safe after that. Uh, they, they did try to swing Deshaun over to their and Xander's side, uh, which you think would work. But Deshaun kind of stayed with his alliance and voted them out. Uh, there, there was one other effort that could be made to keep them safe, and that was Xander's hidden immunity idol. But for some reason, he just didn't want to use it then. I, I guess he was saving it for himself. I mean, he did play it, but more on him uh, right now, actually. Wait, how did this guy not win? Maybe he's just gabbing from Edge of Extinction in disguise. I mean, this dude was a boss, like an Aussie for the next generation. He found a ton of hidden idols and advantages right out of the gates. It was such a physical asset that not even him being unable to vote at a tribal council was enough to convince Yas was not enough to convince Yasa to vote him out. After that, he used their winning streak to work himself in with Evie, Tiffany, and Liana to the point where by the merge, they were a unit. Well, Sort of. As it's already been established, Liana sort of mutinies to Shan's new alliance, leaving Xander and his friends with their tails between their legs. And that merge episode is probably the best episode of Survivor ever. For one thing, Erica's decision with the turn back time twist um, throws Evie back into vulnerability, and more on that twist in part three, where we talk about Luvu. Uh, and so now Xander has to find a way to save his allies. And if only it were so simple enough that he could just play his idol on Evie, except a, a lot of people knew that he had an idol now anyways by word of mouth and you know what people start thinking about and planning when they know that someone has an idol. I mean, even the early, se er, the early years of the immunity idol, um, people were already strategizing that way. Um, but uh, B, now that Liana had changed sides, uh, she could use her knowledge as power advantage to take his idol from him. Uh, so Xander hatches a plan. And the edit is just subtle enough that you don't really know what exactly is going on in his head uh, until it's all played back and a flashback after the, after the move has already been done. And what he did was genius. By far, one of the smartest moves, I think, in all of Survivor. First, he meets with Liana before Tribal, shows her his idol, making it look like he still trusts her. Then he gives his idol and advantages to Tiffany for safekeeping and proceeds to make a fake idol, which he then uses to utterly troll Liana at Final, er, not at Final Tribal Council, at Tribal Council, when she plays her knowledge's power on him, and he just hands over a fake idol, saying, telling her it's fake in the process. He s even says, no, I don't have an idol, but you can have this fake one. Comedy gold. Well, not just comedy gold, just gold in general. Um, now, this move, albeit legendary, was only a temporary fix, and his allies from Yasa just get picked off in the following episodes anyways. But after that, he noticed the majority alliance falling apart, and he uh, was able to like exploit these cracks uh, and... Um, and so he, he like and so he formed a new alliance with Heather and Erica and Ricard and sure enough these members of the majority of the the former majority alliance were actually willing to flip to get Shan and Ricard uh so yeah so that alliance crumbles and now uh Xander's new alliance rises from the ashes and Xander proceeds to win a ton of immunities and uh when he doesn't uh win he uses Ricard as a sort of meat shield so there's always a bigger threat still in the game and all these little things added together as he found himself added up as he found himself at the final three against two players he should have won against I, I can barely explain how he didn't win he was clearly the best player out there but I guess that's the story for part three when we talk about Luvu so be on the lookout for that like comment subscribe and I'll see you soon